Today I'm going to tell you in some detail about one of the most costly mistakes I've ever done on this tractor for sure. Maybe on any tractor, but I got a long history back on the farm. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, for a little background, if you're a 1025R or other subcompact tractor owner, I want to show you the drawbar on the 2038R, show you how much more substantial it is, and show you that it can be moved in or out. Uh, it has four holes that are suitable to store the drawbar. Uh, this is the most far in. I mean, I suppose you could put it into the main hole here. I probably won't be able to get it out if I do that. But it really has four locations here, depending on your needs. So typically when I'm using, you know, the backhoe or any three-point attachment, I will have it stored in this inmost hole like this, just to kind of keep it out of the way. And for some attachments, you need to pull it out further. That background information is critical to our story. You know, before I get any further to this uh, admission and, and, and self-deprecation that I'm doing here today, I'm trying to show you this so that maybe you won't encounter it, or maybe it's something you'll think about. And I know I'm going to have to endure a lot of comments that say how stupid I am, and I shouldn't even deserve to drive a tractor, and probably shouldn't even deserve to live. I, I don't know. It, it just seems to be the way the comments go. But I'm going to be willing to endure that because I want to show you guys uh, the error I made and just provide some encouragement for similar errors and even errors that aren't related. And to start this, I guess I'd like to say that like any red-blooded American, uh, I've always known, just known for a fact, that reading the manual is for sissies. Yeah, you, you don't read the manual unless you absolutely have to, right? Even in addition to the manual, it's probably good to ignore any of the stickers, educational or uh, otherwise stickers on your equipment. If a sticker is there, it's, it's probably just put there by a lawyer and it probably has no relevance whatsoever. So try to ignore all that stuff if you want to create the problem that I created here. It may cost you, but it, you know, it'll make you feel more like a man, right? I guess. <laughs> so here we go. On the particular day here that I caused this problem, I had a John Deere salesman here. I think that's the problem. I had a friend who is a John Deere salesman visiting me, and he and I were going to take out this TS-10 Rhino Ag mower, and uh, I was going to illustrate to him just how well this little tractor handled it. So the first thing I did was pull out my drawbar to the third hole here. I, why didn't I pull it all the way out, or why did I pull it out any? Well, I knew it needed to be pulled out some so that I'd have plenty of room to turn. I was afraid to pull it out all the way to the fourth hole because I thought it might put too much stress. Uh, there might be too much tongue weight here, and I might damage either the drawbar or, or the mechanism there that holds it on. Just a, a quick thought, right? So I pull it out to the third one. Didn't have any issues at all when I hooked it up and it never really even give it a second thought. Yep, my mistake. Let me show you. So I pulled around here to get up on the trailer. Right about this point, I heard a big pop. Didn't know what it was. I looked at my friend, the John Deere salesman. I'm not going to put his name in here. Are you kidding me? He looked back at me and obviously we both heard this pop. We had no idea what it was. We stopped and we took a look around. We didn't see anything. But we knew something wasn't right. Now there may be a bit of a shadow in here. Uh, if so, I apologize. It's uh, a bright day, but I must say it's a pleasant day. I appreciate the cooler temperatures we've had here the last couple of days. First thing you might notice is a little bit of a ditch <laughs> that uh, this tongue, the bottom of the drawbar here, digs. This drawbar on the 2038R is a little bit lower, really, than it should be for this TS-10 mower. When they designed this mower, I don't think they had any idea uh, that someone would want to pull it with such a small tractor. Honestly, I don't think they they really even thought something like this could work, but it does. 
and they've rated it as such. But with a 12 inch tall drawbar like the 2038R has, this does drag occasionally, especially when the tractor goes uphill, um, as in this scenario right here. But that's not the issue. The issue is about the PTO shaft. This PTO shaft, when the tractor is tilted like this, the PTO shaft needs to compress significantly, right? When I was in that third hole of the drawbar, there was not room for that compression. So the drawbar came back, it, it got as short as it could go, and then something had to give. The mower was pressing upward from the back, the tractor was pressing against it from the front, something had to give. Well, I broke the entire rear housing out of the tractor. The PTO shaft apparently got pushed inward, broke the entire housing. Yeah, it was a lot of money. $2,600, I believe. As I stated, I didn't know what had happened, and so we went ahead and traveled to our destination. You can see some of the video here. Uh, I was mowing along just fine, enjoying. We had uh, fescue there that there was a couple of uh, young steers there. They were named Hamburger and Steak, for obvious reasons. And they were so friendly, um, I, I could hardly keep them away from the tractor. And then when we did have the issue, they came right up and they were uh, licking my cell phone here and, and nudging on me, trying to, trying to get me to scratch them a little bit. So it was uh, kind of interesting trying to mow around them. I, I felt like I was gonna run over them. The mowing was going very well. Um, as you can see, it wasn't real heavy, uh, but it was, it was perfect for this 10-foot mower. And then I'm just driving along and I hear a squealing noise. And just as I hear that, the whole PTO shaft just falls out on the, the ground. Now, I'm glad I had the safety chain hooked up. I, I didn't sense that it tried to you know, flip the, the shaft around, but it sure could have. There's no reason why the mower couldn't have just flipped that shaft on around, but I did have the safety chain hooked up. It just fell off right on the ground, as you can see there, and that was the end of it, <laughs> literally the end of the mowing. So yeah, that was last summer. We loaded the tractor back up on the trailer and uh, reported it to Deer. I wasn't very happy with myself. Remember what I said about the stickers and the book? Take a look at this. Okay, the first thing it says is important. That means uh, ignore it and worry about it later, apparently to me. It says required for standard pull type units. You need 14 inches from the center of the hitch pin to the tip of the tractor's PTO shaft. And that's for the 540 RPM version. For the 1000 RPM with the small shaft, you need 16 inches. The 1000 RPM large shaft, you need 20 inches but 14 inches for my configuration. Okay, so that measurement, 14 inches from the tip of the PTO shaft to the center of the hitch pin, and I have that exactly now. On the day of the incident, I was set in the third hole, as I mentioned earlier. Squeeze that together, push this PTO shaft inward, destroyed this housing, and a lot of the stuff that was internal there as well. I don't even know how much. I sent Johnny to the hospital and, well, he came back healthy, but he wasn't very happy. This shaft is really heavy because of this uh, heavy duty CV joint that they have here. But one good feature is that it has a auto locking ring here. Once it gets pulled backwards, it stays back. And that means you don't have to keep holding it back while you're trying to put the shaft on. That's a really nice feature. And then when you shove it in far enough, it auto locks itself. Well, I think it auto locks itself. There, I pull it back, it holds. I shove it on, there it goes. It auto locks itself in. So it's a bit heavy, but it uh, is not so hard to put on because of that latch that it has on that uh, ring. So let's talk for a moment of how this might affect you. The first thing you're thinking is, is I don't have a flex wing mower, I don't have a pull type mower, I don't have the exact same issue that you're talking about. And that's right. Um, this particular issue applies because I'm connected to the drawbar. You're gonna have a lot more change in length 
on the PTO shaft because of a pull type approach rather than a three point approach. You have the issue of turns, but you have the issue of, of elevation changes between the tractor and the mower. So there, there is a, a, a little bit more issue there uh, you're not gonna have on a three point attached mower. Having said that, it still could apply. If you've watched this channel much, we talk about cutting PTO shafts. Uh, obviously you don't wanna cut this one because they've uh, specifically made it for the appropriate length uh, that they need. They've even specified the lengths as we showed in the, the sticker there. But for tillers, um, for the brush mulchers that I've got, a lot of other attachments, we've had to cut the PTO shaft to length. And the risk that you run is if you cut it too long, perhaps when you raise the tiller or lower the tiller and it compresses too short, if it tries to compress further than what the tractor can handle, you could run into that same issue. So make sure you're, you're cutting your PTO shafts short enough. Um, you know, there's two phrases that apply, measure twice, cut once, and uh-oh, I cut it off three times and it's still too short. So hopefully the latter one doesn't apply to you, right? That's the, the, the most direct application of what I got to say here. The other is, unlike me, don't consider it extra manly uh, to avoid the manual and not to read the stickers um, on, on the machines. It is sort of frustrating. They put so many warning stickers on machines that are uh, pretty meaningless, you know, like don't ride on the mower while it's mowing. Uh, okay, I, I, I kind of figured that out. And so we do kind of become numb to them. But in this case, there's several stickers with a green heading, uh, not the orange warning heading, but those with the green heading say important. It's a good idea. Take a look at those, read them. Some of them have to do with lubrication intervals. In this case, it had to do with a, a connection to a tractor. It was, it was important there. It truly was important. Hey, it's not the first time I've ever made a mistake. And honestly, it's not the first time I've ever uh, revealed a mistake to you. I want you guys to know that I'm not perfect, uh, and I want to try to do what I can to, to help you be aware of mistakes that you might make in your own operation. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Mmm. Mm, 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 mm. Pinch my finger. Man. Drop that shaft right on the frame there. Mmm. But my finger was in between. That wasn't comfortable. I probably have a blue fingernail. Ouch. Okay. Small mistakes, but.